The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If the world hates you, remember it hated me before you. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you do not belong to the world, because my choice withdrew you from the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the words I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you too. If they kept my word, they will keep yours as well. But it will be on, account, on my account that they will do all this, because they do not know the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus says to us in today's gospel, if the world hated you, remember it hated me before you. Remember it hated me before you. This time of Easter, we read from the Acts of the Apostles in our first reading, and the Acts of the Apostles continues in our everyday lives. In fact, we write the unwritten chapters of the Acts of the Apostles by our very lives. And therefore, the words that Jesus is speaking to us is very important for us to keep in mind as we strive to be good Christians, living in the midst of all that is involved in today's world. The volatility, the uncertainty, the ambiguity, the pain, the suffering, the grief, the ups and downs, the joys as well. In all of it, we are invited to listen deeply because we now write the other chapters of the Acts. Jesus speaks about the world having hated him, and therefore, in other words, expect that this may be your lot too. This may be your lot too. Now, Jesus does say to us, love as I have loved you. And we've, we've been hearing that as we, as we read through these chapters of John's gospel. And we know this is not easy, and precisely because that love that we are called to give as Christians may not be reciprocated. So, Jesus forgives, and he and yet in the midst of that loving and forgiving and helping and curing and all that he did, he was rejected, spat upon, despised. He was murdered, killed. Jesus is saying, if the world hates you, remember it hated me. Remember, don't look for assurances in this world in other words. And why is that? Because what, we speak, what he's speaking about here as the world is everything that is opposed to the kingdom. And therefore, the, the values and all that he sought to bring to us to help us realize the design of God for our lives, the ways of the world are very different. They stand in contrast to that. And therefore, they're anti-kingdom. And we have to keep that in mind. Because if we seek to saddle boat horses, that's impossible. If we seek to ride two boats, that's impossible. We have to choose. And so he's inviting us to choose for the kingdom. And in our everyday living, to remember that. To remember that. Now, yesterday was International Day of Families. And in this time of pandemic, in a very special way, we find ourselves at home. At home. And some of the discoveries, just chatting with so many people and, and, and in so many meetings and family life uh, and marriage situations, what are people discovering? Well, there's so much that... At home, we have not explored so much, we have not lived so much, so many treasures we have not opened, so much patience we have to learn. Also, things we swept away under a carpet thinking it will disappear. Well, it didn't necessarily disappear. We have to face it. And yet, in the midst of that, we're called to be as Jesus is. We're called to love, we're called to persevere, we're called to write another chapter of the Acts of the Apostles with our own lives. And not to sink into the way of the world that is against the kingdom, which is an individualism. That says, look out for numero uno, only. Look out for myself. Or the, the violence that the world perpetuates, emotionally, physically, and so many ways, that we could perpetuate in our families. That's not the way of the kingdom. So we have to take check of ourselves as we live with our families. Our individualism, our violence. Jesus' is ways away of forgiveness. We have to look at our own hatred and revenge. The long list quite often we keep in our minds and in our hearts of who did what to us when. 
and we do quite well. We have like a, a laser beam looking out for them. I'll do back for them, as we say in Trinidad sometimes. No, not a way of revenge, but a way of love. And so as we really look into our hearts, we realize how, how difficult it is to really live the command to love. And yes, as we seek to live this command, that we may experience the world hating us, the ways that are against all these things. Our greed, our materialism, in this time of when we experience scarcity and stuff in various ways and we see the, the economic realities before us, we may be tempted to hoard. We remember what happened with all the toilet paper because people buy toilet paper, more people buy toilet paper. But knowing all of that, we have to think of the abundance of God who invites us to share. And in our families, therefore, we are called to live this reality, to live this reality, see the dignity of each and every person, and to reach out to others. Because the church is a family of families. The end of family, we see the domestic church, and therefore, the domestic church says that each and every family makes up the big church. Each and every family becomes a space in which grace of God flows. Each and every family has a call to live the life of Christ, because that's where the world and the church intersect in the teaching of the church. That's where we're called to live this example. Families, St. John Paul II, whose 100 anniversary of his birthday is on Monday, said, family, become what you are. Become the love, the life that God has intended for you. And in this time, we have this opportunity to do it precisely that. And people may laugh at us. That's what Jesus is saying. The world might hate you. It might persecute you. But persevere in it. It's not easy. Now, the first reading helps us place some context because you have Paul on a second missionary journey. And what is happening here is that Paul is setting out his agenda. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go there. And then realizes in these interesting words we see in the reading that the Spirit prevented him from going there. He was directed by the Spirit, don't go there, don't go here. And then he has this dream. In other words, the Spirit guides us in our Christian living. The Spirit guides us as we seek to write in, in our everyday lives. We write in the new chapters of our Acts of the Apostles. In our families, the Spirit guides us what to do, how to do it. If we take time to listen, to pray, to have an openness of heart, the Spirit will guide us so that we may truly become domestic churches and bring life to this world, bring life to each other, and help each other grow in love. That's what the domestic church is. In the family, we learn to love, to practice all the virtues, practice patience and love and joy and peace, courage, prudence, temperance. In all of this, families become what you are. The example of love that Jesus gave to us. And remember as we live that, that the ways of the world that are against the kingdom, they won't get it. And therefore, you may be persecuted, laughed at, scorned, mocked, called all sorts of things. Perhaps in your own family as well. Why are you trying to bring all this reconciliation and stuff? Persevere in his love. Persevere in his love. And so by our lives, through his grace, we seek to write new, acts of the, new chapters of the Acts of the Apostles. Amen.